you are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. Hello, everybody. I want to welcome all of us into this glorious um, service today. This is Destiny Church for All Nation, Washington, D.C. And I am very, very delighted to uh, be here with us uh with my wife um she's beside me here uh joining me to uh minister on this platform she's our resident pastor for destiny church for all nation london and she will definitely tell you her name and um, she will be the one to lead us in the prayer today and then um, i want you to please let me just get your friends and anyone that is your acquaintance and let us share this moment uh, this wonderful time of fellowship in the word of god and this is our remembrance sunday i believe god that the god i remember noah in the ark and everything that was with him, that God will remember you today. Anyone with health challenges, anyone with life-threatening challenges, the Lord will remember you. Amen. And please help us share this message uh, this evening with everyone, because I believe that the Lord has a word for every one of us in this particular service. I know that none of us is here that we leave this service the same way mm -hmm. the lord cannot remember you and your life remain the same mm -hmm. all the people that the lord remember in the bible they are uh, their destiny was not the same and the bible says the lord said i am the lord i change it not and that is why he said the sons of jacob are not consumed because god has not changed you will not be consumed with this pandemic. Mm -hmm. I pray for you that is listening to me. We'll be hearing fabulous testimonies of the move of God in our midst, mighty things that God is doing. God is showing himself very mighty with healings of different kind of things, including COVID-19. And we are grateful to God for all these different exemptions that God is giving us is just to prove the validity of the hand of God among his people. And that is why I know that every one of us that is here today, the Lord will surely visit you just the way he visited Anna. And he will do for you the things he has spoken concerning you this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You will finish this year not with empty hands. Mm -hmm. You will finish this year with his inheritance. Mm -hmm. You will finish this year, not with the problem of 2020, 
you will finish this year with the promises of 2020. Mm -hmm. You will finish this year with the prophets of 2020. Mm -hmm. And that is why as we war in the spirit, as we stand in the word of God, we know that God will, will fulfill his word in the life of every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. No one in this place listening to me tonight will have a reason to finish this year with weeping. Mm -hmm. Rather you finish this year with joy. Mm -hmm. And so mommy will uh, pray for us as we kickstart this broadcast. And I know that by the power of your Holy Spirit, the hand of the Lord will rest over entire uh, program and everyone in this place will experience God in a very special way in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, please pray for us. Father, we want to thank you. Amen. We want to appreciate you. Joy Amen. to be in your presence again. Amen. Lord, bless us with the word of life. Amen. Change our life today. Amen. Holy Spirit, breathe upon the world. Amen. Grant us access into God's revelation Amen. and understanding. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 So, and I will start. Mommy will tell us our name. Uh, my name is Pastor Adebo, uh, just for the purpose of uh, representation. And my wife we tell my us name. our name. My name is Elezera. Good. Our name is Elezera, and I want to interpret that for you. The meaning of that name means God with us. So we are blessed in this program today that God is with all of us. <laughs> and he's sitting by my side here. So that is what they call Emanuela. So yeah. you can see when I say I'm very blessed that God is with me. That is the reason for my smile all the time. COVID or no COVID in town, because God is here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you cannot be exposed to God and be exposed to COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't be exposed to the two. Divinity definitely will swallow any humanity. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be uh, hearing the word of God this morning, this particular service, as we're dealing with the wisdom part to last minute miracle part two. Mm -hmm. Part one in the first service mm -hmm. uh, today, that is Destiny Church London, mm -hmm. and we are doing part two in this service. So if you have not been in any of this service, I want to encourage you, please try and uh, connect with these services, and the hand of the Lord will be upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. I know that as the Lord liveth before whom I stand this evening you will not leave this service empty-handed. There are those with eight challenges that are in, going to be in this broadcast today. You are going to leave this service with the hand of God over your health. You are going to experience the hand of God in a very special way. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anyone with any eight challenge, anyone with any eight challenge, the Lord is going to visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will not finish this service empty-handed. Every one of us in this service, I decree, I declare, yes. you will not finish this service empty-handed. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I decree again, every one of you that is joining us in this service, you will not finish this service empty-handed. Amen. You shall be remembered. Amen. If you can shout amen like thunder, I pray for you where you are. The Lord that remember Rachel and open her womb, that God will remember you in a similar way in the name of Jesus amen. Christ. Every open door shall become, an, every, every door that has been closed, we become an open door. Amen. You will experience the miracle of remembrance Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord will visit you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray for somebody that is watching us today that the Lord remember Jonah in the belly of the fish mm. and that fish had to vomit him. Mm. Anything that has swallowed you up outside the will of God, they shall vomit you out today in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for all of you that are watching today. You will not finish this month and this year empty and dead. I prophesy to you 
the Lord will do better unto you than at the beginning. Amen. The Lord will do better to you than at the beginning. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. the hand of God will be upon you Amen. to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. Amen. And as all the things that lay in wait for you, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. the hand of God will bring to pass what is not has spoken Amen. concerning you in 2020. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This year will not end with COVID for you. It will Amen. end with promises fulfilled. Amen. It is done. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we'll be talking about this part. What are these parts that wisdom part that if you follow it, it will open you up to last minute miracle by remembrance. Amen. And we just pick it from where we stopped in the morning, talking about uh, prophecy, moving from prophecy to fulfillment. How, what will I do to God, God to remember me? What will I do for God to visit me? And in the book of First Timothy, to start from that point, First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, it says something there. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecy previously made concerning you, that by then you may wage a good warfare. Now, how do you, it's not about the war, but Every war must have a strategy. Any war that does not have a strategy, you will, not, you will not meet your target. And that's why for you to move from prophecy to fulfillment, there must be a strategy that you need to implement. And we try to discuss some of the points in the morning, talking about some of the uh, uh, secret of Abraham, how he moved from prophecy to fulfillment, how he used uh, uh, being liberal, being uh, sharing what he has, to open, to unlock the fulfillment of the prophecy of what God says concerning him, he will be a father of nation. And now the Bible says we should watch a war of faith. You know, he said, I commit to you, you know, concerning you that by them, you may watch a good warfare. Every warfare must have a target, must have a strategy. Without strategy, you never hit any target. And that's what we are talking about this evening taking us back to the scripture in Proverbs 24, verse 6. Proverbs 24, verse 6, says something there. Proverbs 24, verse 6. Quick glance to it. Proverbs 24, verse 6, make us to understand is there. He said, for by wise counsel, you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. For by wise counsel, you will, you will wage your own war. Amen. And in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. For you to move from prophecy to fulfillment, to see visitation, to God to remember you, you must apply wisdom. And that wisdom does not just happen. You have to find out what did I need to do? What will I do to move from this point to the next level? God wants to change your level. God is still working on your situation. But what strategy can I implement to my situation to move me from point A to point B? I've got stuck in this point. It happened to Anna. Anna got stuck in the position of barrenness. Even though Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 told us, told us there, be fruitful, multiply you know, in that place. He gave us a complete picture how he has already sent a word forth for fruitfulness. Fruitfulness should not be a problem for a woman looking for a child. But Anna found herself, you know, being uh, stagnated in a condition that prophecy wasn't coming to pass. And she took more step to prayer. She said, I'm not just going to pray. The Bible makes us to see in First Samuel there, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1, is, is verse, six to, verse 6 to 7, he says, and her rival also provoke her severely to make her, to make her miserable because the Lord has closed her womb. Verse 7, it says, so it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her, thereby she wept and did not eat. The Bible said this situation continued. Even though God has prophesied, you know, in the book of Genesis, that fruitfulness for every woman, she deserves to be fruitful. God has designed every woman not to be barren, not to be barren to be fruitful. But in the case of Anna, it wasn't happening. The Bible said year in, year out, she keep going there, nothing was happening. 
nothing was happening in her situation, you know, and to make the situation worse, her rival keep making her miserable in her situation. The husband tried his best to even make her comfortable a bit, giving her double portion for everything he was sharing for his wives, but it never get solved the situation. In other words, it helped us to understand our blessing is not in the hand of people. Mm. Our blessing is not in the hand of people. They may try to make you comfortable in that state, but God has the answer you are looking for. That's the reason why every effort the husband of Anna tried to make her to feel it is never satisfying because prophecy wasn't fulfilled. He has no power to make that prophecy to happen. Only God can make that power to happen. And that's the reason why Anna sit down and consider her situation. She told herself, if I didn't move, if I didn't change my strategy, my prophecy will remain, my situation will remain in the state of prophecy, not fulfillment. Then what did she do? In the same Genesis, in the same first Samuel, chapter one, chapter one, verse 11, the Bible said, then she changed the strategy. Most of the time she blamed her husband, she blamed her rival, she blamed every situation around her. But now she tried to be focused. She tried to review her situation. I want someone out there to know God is interested in changing your situation. Mm -hmm. But you cannot keep using the same method and think God is going to change the situation. Mm -hmm. You need to change strategy. Mm -hmm. You need to do something different. Mm -hmm. Abraham was prophesied. He will be a father of nation. But year in, year out, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Until when he did something different. The Bible says when that angel came around, he began to look at the need in the life of that angel that come in the in the in the in, in the person and he begin to say let me take care of the need of this man let me make life easy for him let me give him water let me give him food to eat and as he was doing that his solution was battered as he was doing that god remember him prophecy in genesis 21 was battered what did anna did Anna moved from trying to look at her situation as people are the one behind it as situation you know that she is she going to die in this situation the bible says in verse 11 then she made a vow before she will go to shiloh and come back trying to look at her rival trying to look at her husband you are the reason of my situation this way you are the reason of my maybe you look at 2020 and say maybe that's because of 2020 full of covid 2020 this but i want you to know your life is not controlled by the situation happening. Your life is controlled by God. Yes. Because he said in Jeremiah 29 verse one, he said he stood towards you. They are for peace and not of evil. Amen. To bring you to that peaceful end. Mm -hmm. There is a peaceful end in 2020. Yes. It doesn't matter how rough it is. Mm -hmm. God's program is what is going to happen in your life, not Satan's program. Amen. He said he has a plan for you. Amen. And that plan is that you will end better than the way you started. Amen. That plan is that you will, be, you will move from prophecy to fulfillment. Amen. Anna has to change her strategy from offense, from being angry, from blaming people, from blaming her rival to focus on God. Mm. God, you are the creator of my, you are my creator. Mm. You are the giver of life. Mm. You are the one that right, that, that, that put this word together, mm. that a woman should have a womb and in that womb should carry a baby. Mm. My womb should not be empty. My womb should carry a baby. Mm. And that's why she came before the Lord in a different, with a different approach. Mm. What did she say? She said, then she made a vow and said, look and say, oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant mm. and remember me mm. is somebody mm. there praying that prayer and yes. remember me so I remember sunday and remember me mm. and not forget your handmaid uh. will give your handmaid male child uh. then i will give him to the lord uh. all the days of his life uh. and no result shall come upon his head uh. can you see the strategy has mm. changed she has moved from looking at people as her focus to looking at god uh. And the Bible said, if you, she said, if you can remember me, yes. if you can visit me, Lord, can remember me, this Lord. is my part of my response. I'm going to give you this seat uh, back. Mm. If you can remember me. Yes. And the Bible says, after that meeting, after that prayer, after she changed her strategy, the Bible makes us to understand in verse 19, mm. it says, then they rose early in the morning. Mm and worship before the Lord oh. and return and came to their 
house yes. at Rema, and yes. Elkanah knew Anna, his wife, mm. and the Lord remember her. Amen. What a joy. Hallelujah. The Lord remember her. Hallelujah. I According don't to her request. Yes. She moved from prophecy. To fulfillment. She moved from prayer into fulfillment. I want to say here, yeah, if there was no verse 11, there will not be verse 19. Amen. It is verse, 19, verse 11 that bad verse 19. Mm. So many people, they remain in the chapter, they remain in chapter promises. They remain in chapter prophecy. They don't move into chapter of fulfillment by remembrance. She asked the Lord to remember her. Mm. This is our remembrance on day. Maybe you are there like Anna because she got this particular miracle at her old because she sought God for this for a long time. If the Bible is truly happy that she was almost there for 60 years seeking God for this thing, it was at the last minute that you will say it is almost past the time of even getting those kind of things. Last minute time the Lord remembered her. Amen. So I want to know that the God that remember Anna, that same God is one that said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. That same God is going to remember you today. Amen. Wherever you are, if you can shout amen like thunder, amen. every one of you that is here, the same God that remember Anna, that same God will remember you. Amen. The God that remember Anna and turn a weeping woman to a winning woman. Yes. <laughs> it yes. was the, the remembrance of God that turned a weeping woman into a winning woman. Amen. I see the God of heaven that remember Anna. I see him remembering you today in Jesus' Amen. name. You will not finish this year empty-handed. The implication here is that had the Lord not remember Anna, she will have finished the year empty-handed. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Had the Lord not remember Anna, she will have died barren. That's the point. I want to let you know, had the Lord not remember Anna, the problem is that she would have died and a, 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 a person that was making jest of her, her state would have remained in that same state unchanged. But I have the same faith. I have faith this night Amen. to agree with everyone yes. on this line oh, that the God that remember Amen. Anna yes. when she cried out to him, the Lord that remember when she wept and said, Lord, that you remember your handmaid. Uh, I pray for you tonight, everyone that is on this platform. In a similar way, if you can cry out to God, the Lord will remember you. I say the Lord will remember you. If you can cry out to God, the Lord will remember you. The Lord will remember you the way remember Anna. And wipe away your reproach. God has a hand that take away reproach. Amen. I want everyone on this platform that is listening on Facebook, listening on every platform, uh, on Zoom, on YouTube, begin to pray right now. Pray that same prayer that Anna prayed, that say, Lord, remember me. I don't know what is that thing that has become a reproach in your life. I want to open your mouth and begin to declare, begin to ask God. God, that the Lord will remember you. Anna asked the Lord and said, Lord, if you remember me, she made a vow and she prayed. She was using strategies. She to push the door. She, 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 she came and faced God. She stopped facing the husband. She faced God. She stopped facing Pelina. She faced God. She prayed and made a vow. If you, where you are, if you can pray and ask God to remember you where you are begin to pray right now begin to pray say to the lord lord remember me lord remember me and move me oh lord from the realm of promises 
into the realm of fulfillment. Oh God, remember me. Don't let me finish this year without a testimony. Lord, remember me in the dying minute of this year. Remember me in the remaining few days of November. Lord, remember me. Can you open your mouth and pray where you are right now? Begin to pray that the Lord will remember you. Ask God to remember you. Mayaka tan de kreke sete ambale kaya kata ayi gendo beli keleta ambele ge yo ba be 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 ge de ge to prakata amale ge ye tan de ke de buzuboya begin to pray ask the Lord to remember you in the name of Jesus e kanto pane kaya kaya kayo ba be le ke telesa Lord remember us O Lord so that we will not feel this year empty and dead. Remember us, O oh Lord. Maya, Gaya, Zindele, Sumbreke, Aya, Kantom, Negi, Zumbi, Ambali, Yegendo, Bali, Ataya. Remember us, O God. Maga, Zubele, Shekali, Kese, Bodo, Boboya. Aye, Mabale, Kede, Boboya. Lord, remember us. Lord, remember us. Wherever you are, begin to pray. Ask God to remember you. Ask God to remember you. Ask God to remember you and remove this reproach that is that is that is becoming uh, 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 you are facing all the time. Ask God to remember you with His mercy. Ask God to remember you with His favor. Ask Him to remember you in the dying minute of this year. Ask Him to remember you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen into prayer is the strategy because each and every one of us has different prophecy that God has given concerning our life and our destiny and each prophecy required different strategy amen it required different strategy for Anna she used vow to be able to translate from prophecy to fulfillment but we are using that scripture again in in the book of Proverbs 24, verse 6, God, give me a wise, he said, for by wise counsel, you will wage your own war, and in multitude of counsel, there is safety. Lord, give me counsel, that will give me wisdom, that will move me, that will give me strategy, wisdom, that will move me from where I am to the place of fulfillment of prophecy. It's just a key. God giving you a key, it will move you from where, from promise to fulfillment. It will move you from prophecy to fulfillment. And we are going to pray that, Lord, whatsoever the key I need to move from this point to the next point in my life, Lord, give it to me. Give it to me. Reveal it to me. Reveal it to me. Because for us, for Anna, to be able to change position, to be able to move from that stagnation of, of, of barrenness to fruitfulness, she has to apply a strategy. I know God has a plan for each and every one of us. Also, he has a counsel. He has wisdom. He has direction for how you will come out of that situation. And we want to join faith with you tonight to ask the Lord, Father, give us wisdom. Wisdom, counsel that will move me from point A to point B. Wisdom that will move me from prophecy to fulfillment. Strategy that will bring me out of this stagnation, out of this problem, out of this prison, out of this condition. I know there is a way out, but I don't know how to come out. But God, you know all things. You know all things. Give me that wisdom. I want us to pray. Begin to open your mouth and pray. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me, Lord, wisdom. Give me wisdom. Everything Lord, laid there before God. Yes. There's no darkness before him. Yes, he sees everything. Yes, he has the wisdom you need, yes. the strategy you yes. need, the idea you need. Yes. Give it to me, oh God, Lord, me that strategy. I will move from this point to the next level Lord, in my life. That this year will not, Lord, I will not end strategy. this year empty hand. I will not end this year the same way. Lord, Give me Father, strategy. give me strategy and Lord, wisdom. Give me strategy. give me strategy and wisdom. Give me strategy and wisdom. Grant me understanding, revelation, insight to this situation, what I should do, how I will do it, to move to the next level. You have Anna to know what to do, to come out of barrenness, to come out of stagnation. Lord, we are asking for wisdom. We are asking for strategy. We are asking for grace. 
I will move on from level of prophecy to fulfillment, to fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your help. Thank you, in Jesus. Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I want us to know, like we have said, that um, what are the things we need to do that will move you? Uh, what are the wisdom paths you have to follow? Uh, that will bring you to your realm of last minute miracles by remembrance. In the first time we spoke about liberality, mm -hmm. which was what Abraham did in Genesis 18, mm -hmm. uh, when the angel appeared to him. And we said that it was that liberality of what he gave to that angel that provoked the prophecy from the mouth of that angel. And the angel said, by this time next year, I come to the time of life, your wife will carry a child. Now, it was what he did the liberality that was shown to that to that angel that made the angel to provoke a word of prophecy. Do you know it's the same thing that Anna did? When Anna brought Samuel to the Lord in Shiloh the following year, she presented the boy and Eli said, oh, you brought this boy because of that, because of bringing that boy because of that seed of bringing um, Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, see what happened here. I want to tell you what your seed does. He said here to her, he said, he said, he said here, uh, 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 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18. 1 Samuel 2, verse 18. And but Samuel ministered before the Lord even as a child. We are in a leaning effort. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe bring it to him year by year. Mm -hmm. When she came up with her husband to offer yearly sacrifice, mm -hmm. Eli blessed Elikina and his wife and said, the Lord give you descendant from this woman mm -hmm. for the loan that she was, that was given the to Lord. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then they, they go to their home, verse 21. And the Lord visited Anna mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And she conceived and bore five children because mm -hmm. of the seed See. she brought that provoked another prophecy from the mouth of Eli. Mm -hmm. And that was fulfilled immediately. Mm -hmm. Just like that prophecy that was provoked from the mouth of the angel was fulfilled in Genesis 21. Verse 1 to 2, the Lord said, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said, and it was he has spoken. In a similar way, the Lord visited, uh, 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 the Lord, the Lord fulfilled, visited Anna to fulfill the word that was spoken by Eli. Mm -hmm. That many people, they just remain in the realm of prophecy mm -hmm. because they did not do what is required by them to do. And that's where wisdom comes in. Eli prophesied and said, may the Lord give you more children from this woman for the loan, for the bringing of a vow. You can see what your seed does. The seed provoked prophecy from the mouth of Eli and the Lord visited them. So the prophecy was preceding the fulfillment. There was, a, because the word, the word visit, and the word remembrance are used interchangeably. Now the Lord visited Anna and she had five more. Mm -hmm. Let me say this to you. If God can give you one, he can give you more. Mm -hmm. If God can give you one, he can give you more. Mm -hmm. But the thing she did to get the first one was the thing she did to get the mm -hmm. next one. Mm -hmm. She made a vow and God said, okay, you made a vow and pray God fulfill it. Now, when she came to redeem her vow, another prophecy was provoked. Mm -hmm. What are we saying? We are talking about moving from the realm of prophecy to fulfillment, from the realm of chapter 18, Genesis to 21. There are many people that remain in the realm of prophecy. They never see fulfillment. There are so many prophecy and dream they have seen. I decided the dream, a uh, prophecy, uh, pastor prophesied to me, or did what prophesied to me, but they never pass with me because they don't have not received grace to do. Number one will say um, liberality will be part, wisdom part number two, fighting for your prophecy, fight war with you. number three, 
is fighting with wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's what we were talking about. Number three is wisdom. And that was what we were talking about, that wisdom means strategy. Mm -hmm. That was what Anna did. And there's also the place of living in wisdom and not behaving foolishly. Mm -hmm. If you behave foolishly, you will remain in the realm of prophecy. You won't see prophecy fulfilled. God will not be moved to remember or visit you. And that is what I want to say to many of us here. If you want to see prophecy fulfilled, please live in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Just to add to the point you mentioned at the moment, looking at the life of Saul, how he lost out from next level of his life through foolishness. The Bible say you when you are mentioning about how Anna used her vow to provoke another prophecy, another uh, uh, blessing, or another pro prophecy, another fruitfulness through the mouth of uh, Eli. Now the Bible makes us to understand. God Almighty was taking Saul step by step, face by face in his life, but it got to a point that he missed it. And the Bible counted that as foolishness. He couldn't go to the next level of fulfillment of the prophecy, establishment. of establishment of God's plan for his life. Why? Because he acted foolishly. In the book of First Samuel 13, verse, uh, 40, verse 10 there, the Bible says they were at a point where they are waiting for Samuel to come in to bless the sacrifice and to pray over it and um, before the sacrifice was done. But he ran because he was trying to please people, because he was trying to keep the people with him, not looking at what God wants, now what people want. And the Bible makes us to understand he rushed and was doing what he was not supposed to do. And the Bible makes us to understand in verse 10, now it happened as soon as he has finished presenting the bone offering, Samuel came in and Saul went out to meet him that he may greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done, Saul? Said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the, Phil the Philistines gathered together at Mesha. What are we trying to say here? He began to take decision into his, he want to fulfill that aspect that God servant supposed to do. Samuel supposed to do part, that part, but he was running ahead. I don't know many people may be in that state because God did not come on time. They want to do things that will tamper with God's prophecy in your life. You don't need to follow what people are doing. All you need is to follow the guides of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says Saul missed out. And it was said, you behave foolishly. You did foolishly. For you running ahead of God to do what Samuel supposed to do. For you standing in the position that you should not. Well, you know, you need to wait for Samuel to come. Sometimes in attempt to wait for prophecy, we need patience. Because without patience, you will miss out. You, yes, you will miss out. Where the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. he said the end of the matter is better than the beginning. Yes. A patient spirit is better than a than than a man that is proud in spirit. So now when it comes to prophecy, you will go through some trial. You will go through some test, testing, and you need patience. Or else people will be suggesting all manner of idea for you. Saul was concerned about what people will be thinking than what God will be saying concerning him. He was concerned about keeping the people than keeping God's presence in his life. He was concerned about losing people than losing God's presence. You have to be aware when you are time of waiting for God to fulfill something in your life, you will go through challenges, but be careful. Don't give in to impatience because impatience can make prophecy to be aborted. Mm. Impatience can make things that God could have established I mean in your life is. to be destroyed. Saul missed out I mean and hinder. And where are those people he was trying to please? They were nowhere when he was on the floor. So understand, it's only God that can take you to your promised land. No man can do that for you. People are there around you because God is with you. Yeah. When God move away from your life, you know you don't have anybody. You know you are not the favorite of anybody. It's God's presence that beautify your life for people to be hanging around you. It's God's presence around you that make you relevant. The day you begin to think because you are making it, people are hanging around you, you miss it. Saul miss his own. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
you will not act foolishly in Jesus name. When God is about to come through for you, you will not be found in another place, in a wrong place. You will not be found an, after other gods. You will not be doing things that God will say, your angel of blessing will be there and they cannot find you. Because you have gone with the crowd because you have gone with the multitude. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. If God tell you stay here and I will meet you here to bless you, stay there. Amen. If God asks you someone is coming to do something for you, don't try to take their place. Amen. Don't try to take your, their place. Amen. He tried to take the place of Saul oh, somewhere only to land in a problem. Amen. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the Bible called that foolishness. Mm. The Bible called that foolishness. That is foolishness is foolishness when you uh, take the place of other people mm. that you are not supposed to take. It was that foolishness that destroyed Uzziah. Uzziah was under Zechariah. He didn't know that his success was because of attachment to Zechariah. Mm. Bible says that he sought the Lord. Second Chronicles 26, verse, verse 5 to 6. Mm. The days of Zechariah, the understanding visions. And as long as he saw the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. Mm. Second Chronicles 26, from verse 5. The Lord made him to prosper. Mm. So he, he, he knew that Zechariah played a role in the life of, in the success of Uzziah. Just like Samuel has a role in the success of Saul. So he got to a point that pride entered the head of Uzziah. If I can do without this, I can do without this priest, I can do without this pastor. And he, in fact, not only wanted to do without, he wanted to take their place. He wanted to go and take the census. He wanted to be the one to be taking the census, which is the duty of the priest. And Bible says, this honor shall not be, this honor will not be yours from the Lord. Mm. And because he overstepped his boundary, to want to take the place of Zechariah in the temple, it was leprosy that ended his journey. Mm. That is foolishness. Mm. Don't allow impatience to make you take the place of those that God has not assigned to you. Don't do what God has not assigned to you. Now, another, another, another point, number, number, number four point, is that uh, you must learn how to face the heat. You must learn how to face the heat. That's number four. Learn that is don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed while you are waiting. Mm. While you are waiting for God to come through for you, don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed because you cannot have prophecy and not have challenges. Remember, when we are, there is no free war zone in life. There is no, there's no free war zone in the journey of life. When they say a land is full of milk and honey, it's also full of cow and bees. Mm. Remember that milk comes from cows and honey comes from bees. Mm. You can't have milk when you, don't have, when you don't have a cow. You can't have honey when there are no bees. Remember that you need to fight the cow and the bees to get the milk and honey. What I'm asking to all of you is that don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed uh, with the problem that you are facing. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Sheep don't sink because of the water around them. A sheep does not sink because of the water around them. Sheep sink because the water gets in them. That is why don't let what is happening around you to get inside you and weigh you down. I say it again. Don't let what is happening around you to get inside you and weigh you down. Refuse to be overwhelmed. And the way to avoid that is constant prayers. Because uh, be careful for nothing. It be anxious for nothing. But by prayer, and supplication, let your request, you know, not to God, say, cast your body upon the Lord for a carriage for you. Mm -hmm. You don't be like a woman. I have a story of a woman that a man saw on the road. That's why you must have courage, mm -hmm. courage to face your challenges. Abraham was sitting down in the heat 
looking while looking in that eye, that was when he saw the angel. Hear me very well. Don't allow, I saw I had a story of a woman that a man saw on the road and the man, woman was carrying load on the head. And the man said, oh, this woman is carrying load on the head. And he carried the woman into the car. So when they were going on the way, he was looking to the rear mirror and he couldn't see his back. He got the load of the woman he saw. The woman carried the load again and put it on her head again, like this. Uh, the man said, Mama, Mama, the reason why I carry you on the way is because I saw you carrying load. You see, carry load again inside the car. <laughs> no, 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 was. If you give God your body, don't take it again. If you give it to God, then let God take care of it. Mm -hmm. Don't be too, don't let chaos to tear you apart. Mm -hmm. Cast your burden upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever you cannot undo, give it to God. Just say, Lord, I hand over this care to you. I, don't, I cannot handle it, but I hand it over to you. If you give it to God, don't take it from him again. That's the point that will help you to be able to, a strategy that will help you to get as your miracle. Number five of King have is gratitude. That is Romans chapter four, verse 18 to 20. Romans chapter four, verse, uh, verse 18 to 20. Romans 4, 20 says, Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God before the promise that God gave to him came to pass. It was giving glory to God. Romans chapter 4, verse 8. Romans 4, 8. The Bible says here, Abraham. 4, 18. Mm, 18 to 20. Okay. So who, contrary to hope, in hope, believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendant be. Verse 19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, already dead, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. You can see, yeah, but he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Mm -hmm. Now, fully hear what I'm saying here. Uh, there, are, there are those uh that actually some people wait for god to fulfill prophecy before they give him the glory but abraham what we are talking about about is god is the, is the area where you are giving god the glory while waiting for god to fulfill prophecy giving thanks while you are waiting having the attitude of gratitude while you are waiting Anybody can thank God when things have happened. Anybody can do that. But when you are giving thanks to God while you are waiting, that is faith. It takes faith to be saying, Father, thank you. Because I will not finish this month empty-handed. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you. That is the 11th hour of this month. But I know that we will not finish this month empty-handed. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you that faithful is he that has spoken. Faithfully see that will do it. Mm -hmm. Lord, I believe you. Thank you. Thank you in advance. I thank in advance. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, uh, gratitude is an attitude. Gratitude is a, is a character formation. Mm -hmm. Gratitude will help you to have a right attitude while you are waiting. Gratitude will help you to have a right attitude why you are waiting. Mm. You will not be sour to people. You will not be giving everybody your problem. Not everybody that agrees to say good morning. Say, what is good in this one right now? Don't greet me. Don't leave me alone. No, no, no that was everybody. You know, be fighting everybody for your problem. No, they don't want as well for your problem. Gratitude helps you to keep a good attitude. Mm. It, do not, it do not let you have a sour attitude. Romans 4.20 in spite of the fact that God has not done what he promised. One of the ways to be able to secure God's hand on your life is gratitude. Remember, as you do that, you are, you are showing strong faith. And strong faith is one of the things that move God in your favor. 
Let me say this. If God, your faith say yes, God cannot say no. God will always respect faith. And the last one is waiting. You must learn the journey of waiting. Job 14, 14. He said, all the days of my appointed day will I wait till my change come. There are prophecies that require a waiting for them to come to pass. It's like the pregnancy of elephant and dog. It's like the prophecy of elephant and dog. Abraham waited for 25 years. All this thing we are talking about. Abraham waited for uh, 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 25 years uh, for God to come through for him. Jo Joseph waited for 13 years. God is not a microwave God. God may not come at your time, but it will never be late. Mm -hmm. It's just like the pregnancy of elephant and dog that I read about. An elephant and dog became pregnant at the same time, I read. Three months down the line, dog gave birth to six puppet. And six months later, the dog pregnant again. And nine months after, and nine, and nine months, he gave birth to another dozen puppet. And the father continued. On the 18th month, the dog approached elephant and said, are you sure that you are pregnant? Because we became pregnant on the same date. <laughs> I have given birth three times. <laughs> and you, you are still here. Yeah. You have not yet given birth to at all. They are now grown. He said, look at my dog now. They have become big dogs. <laughs> yet, you are still pregnant. What is going on? Elephant replied. There is something I want you to understand. Elephant speaking. What I am carrying is not a puppet, it's an elephant. <laughs> I only give birth <laughs> to one in two years. <laughs> mm -hmm. When my body, when my own baby hits the ground, the heart will feel it. <laughs> when my baby cross the road, human beings stop to watch them in admiration. Mm -hmm. What I carry. What he said was telling, he was telling the woman bitch, see, when they when I, when my son walk, he said, What I carry, draw attention. <laughs> so what I am carrying is mighty and great. What am I saying? Don't lose faith when you see others receiving their answers to prayers. Don't be envious of other te testimony. If you have not received your blessing, don't despair. Say to yourself, my time is coming. Amen, amen. When your own testimony hits the heart, people are going to admire it. Amen. That is sometimes what you are, the reason for delay is because you have elephant, elephant pregnancy. It's elephant dimension of miracles that you have. That is why it seems that your pregnancy is taking long. Others are sharing testimony. I think the elephant kind of testimony can be likened to 11th hour miracle mm. because it's waited for long. You say, I say, how come that you waited this idea? Why stand the idea all day? That is elephant. He stand waiting pregnancy all two years. Mm. But when he got the miracle like this, even those that have been gotten the miracle their own before, they begin to envy us. Ah, ah, how are you giving this man the same thing with us? When the God of the 11 hour show up for you, it will equal the years that others that have been receiving testimony have received. Amen. God will equal it. God will bring you an overtaking miracle. Amen. A miracle that will compensate you. Amen. A compensating miracle. Amen. You can imagine the child of an elephant when it's now walking. All the puppet, it's going to say, bo, bo, and they run away. Bo, bo. And they be running because elephant is coming. I prophesy to you, your Amen. elephant blessing is coming. Amen. I prophesy to you, your Amen. elephant time is coming Amen. because you are waiting for God. That Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord, they say shall renew their strength. They that is said they wait on him, they look unto him, and they were not ashamed because they were lighting. I want to encourage you today. That, that's why the Bible says, be ye, be ye followers, Hebrews 6, 12, be ye followers of them who through faith and patience obtain. Tell me somebody that has faith, I'll show you a man that has patience. Be ye followers, Hebrews 6, 12, be ye followers of them 
who through faith and patience obtain. I see somebody watching today that you are about to receive elephant blessing. Amen. Elephant 11th hour blessing. Amen. When your own blessing eats the ground, the whole heart will admire Amen. it. When the, your own blessing eat the ground, the heart will shake. Amen. When your own blessing eat the ground, you are going to receive an overtaking miracles. Amen. You'll receive last minute overtaking miracle Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm beginning to pray right now. If where you are right now, we round up this teaching uh, by saying, if you are there, you are not born again, this is your opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Because except a man born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mommy will lead us in that prayer. If you are there, you are not saved. That is where your journey begins from. Amen. We want to lead you to Christ as you are out there. You want to join God's family to participate in what God is doing. We want to invite you through this prayer. We believe as you join, God will visit you. God will change your life. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I come to you today. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book. Write of my life. name in the book of Wash life. My sins. Wash me from my sins. With your sins. precious blood. Your blood. Today, today, I receive you. I receive you. I forsake all my I ways. I forsake all my wrong ways. I forsake all my wrong ways. I forsake all my wrong ways. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' precious name, we in pray. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 I believe that if you follow these steps. It'll be a blessing to you. Amen. Liberality, uh, fighting your way by faith, the place of wisdom, Amen. facing your challenges with courage, the place of gratitude, Amen. and the place of waiting. Uh, the last one I'll give you tomorrow because our time is gone. I have the next one, but I will give you that tomorrow. Join me tomorrow, 8 p.m. on this same platform. Uh, and tomorrow is the last day of November. That service is cash and carry, kill and go. I want to let this an injury. Is is the injury? We call it injury hour, uh, injury time. When they are playing football, they call what is called injury time. It is anybody that scored during injury time, they become this, they become they become the winner. And those in football, we call it extra time. They give them extra time to play and see before they go to penalties. So I want to let you know that God's blessing is coming your Amen. way. Tomorrow is the last day in the month of November. We'll be having the broadcast and we'll pray together 1145 into the new year, new month of December. Join us for all this program. Uh, I want to bless all of you. I appreciate all of you that join us today. Uh, from Terry Chagi from Zimbabwe, uh, Stella Ose. Thank you, Minister Celia. Thank you, Sister Sharon. Thank you for being with us this evening on Facebook Live. Um, Dickness Kuyate, thank you uh, for joining us tonight. And then um, we are Judith Ogeshi. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Astana, thank you. Uh, Brian Manuel and all the people that join us online and those that are watching us on Zoom. I celebrate you. I watch, I appreciate every one of you. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will myself and my wife and all the leadership team of Destiny Church, Washington, D.C. I want to let you know that your 11 hour miracle, you will not miss it. Amen. Don't give up because God can show up anytime. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We we'll look forward to seeing you. Uh, and also, please share this message with your friends. Do me a favor, share this message with somebody. And also, you can watch this message on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel that is called Destiny Mandate TV. Uh, you can watch this, um, you can watch the our program on that platform, Destiny Mandate TV, and please subscribe to that channel because so that when I upload new videos, you can see it. And if you are believing God for a marital destiny, we we'll pray for you that God will visit you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a very wonderful remaining part of the evening. Bye bye. are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime.
you must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that, that 